Okay, praise God. Let's pray. Slight for you back there. Thank you, Lord. Father, anoint our hearts today to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, to be sensitive to what you're saying by the Spirit of God. And we thank you, Lord, that when you send your word, it releases life, your life. It releases power. It does surgery within us for the better. And it grows your life within us. Lord, let it do all those things today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, We're looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've looked at the communication gifts of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and um, prophecy. Right. And then we're on the second section of three, groups of three, the second group, the revelatory gifts. We've already done words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and today we're going to start the discerning of spirits. We ain't going to finish it today. So it may take some time on this one, but I think it's a very important gift. They're all important, but this one, for me, stands out. So, discerning of spirits. There is a spiritual dimension behind the natural world. Would you agree? Amen. Absolutely. That's, that's a good start. The spiritual is eternal. The natural is temporal. The spiritual, I'm going to suggest to you, is more real than the natural. What you see in the natural can be a deception due to the spirit operating behind it. Okay? Say that again. What you see in the natural can be a deception due to the spiritual operating behind it. We'll give you an example right at the beginning of the Bible. Satan has the ability to make a bad tree look good. And to blind us to the bad that's in it. Where we only see the good in it. It's a con. Alright? So that's what I'm meaning by that. An agreement with his lies empowers the liar within us or in our circumstances. And it opens the door to robbery. And the discerning of spirits helps us to give us a true perspective of what really is happening and to keep us safe. Don't you feel good when you feel safe? Don't you want to be safe? I want to be safe. My, my circumstances might not be safe, but I can be safe within them in him. Um, and he wants to keep, that gift is going to enable us to keep us from robbery, robbery of you reaching your potential and robbery from God's goodness that he has for you. I don't want to be robbed of anything that God has died for us for. Jesus has died to give you his best. Why would you not want the best? This gift helps us. It's not the only thing, but it's, it's a powerful tool uh, to keep us in that place where we can reach our potential and God's goodness for us. Let's take a look at the scope of this gift for a moment. I mean, this is probably not the... Well, it may be. Let me just... Um, let me bring up... Um, can we have a... I think we've got a slide here. The Greek word for discerning is to judge. Discerning is 
the ability to judge. I thought that was interesting. To judge by the gifting of the Holy Spirit. All right? So we judge situations. And here are some scriptures, just a few I've thrown together here. There's many more. But 1 Corinthians 2.15 says, He that is spiritual judges all things. Now Jesus said at one point, don't judge lest you be judged. But this is a different type of judgment. We need to judge spiritually. So the spiritual person judges all things. If you're just accepting things on the surface as you see them and acting accordingly and making your decisions accordingly and living accordingly to what you just see in the natural, then you, you have a tendency to be a carnal Christian. The Bible talks about being carnal as Christians. The, the Corinthians, it says, you're carnal Christians. I want you to be spiritual Christians. So spiritual Christians are going to judge all things. We're going to try all things. We're not just going to accept all things that come our way. Uh, Proverbs 14, 15 says, the simple believes every word. I remember this, God kept giving me this every time. Uh, you know, when he was calling me into the ministry so many years ago, this was the scripture he kept giving me. This sim I, I used to believe everything that was coming at me. And I was in confusion most of the day, thinking, God, is this really you? Is that just a mess? And this was the scripture he kept giving me. The simple believes every word, but the wise man considers his steps well. We need to check stuff out, basically. We need to check the source of what's coming at us and what we're to receive. And a wise man wins souls. A wise man builds bridges into people's hearts. And wise women as well. We need to try things, judge things with the Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus said in John 7, 24, do not judge according to sight, but judge righteous judgment. So we've got to line up our judgment with what heaven is saying. We've got to see is what heaven's saying about this situation. And then when we agree with what heaven is saying, that is righteous judgment. Okay. And that's how Jesus did it. He says, as I hear, John 5.30, as I hear, and the implication is the, by the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Amplified puts that in. I judge. So it's hearing the Holy Spirit. It's having that revelation and that gift operating in our lives that helps us to, to, to walk through our life in a safe place and in an effective place in this battle that we are engaged in. Um, some well-meaning Christians tend to abort this gift. Because they think, oh, have you ever heard him say, I shouldn't be thinking such wrong things about such nice people. <laughs> well, that may be true. <laughs> but sometimes it can be the witness of the Holy Spirit saying, beware. There's a warning bell going off inside you saying, beware of this. And you're going, oh, I can't judge them. And we have bought what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to us. So we need to discern the difference between natural judgment and spiritual judgment. Yeah. yeah? We need sensitive hearts, really. We need to attune to the Holy Spirit. So important. Amen. Don't abort this gift. And sadly, this gift, I believe, is aborted often. And we need to discern whether we're aborting it or embracing it. Uh, we are not judging people with this gift, but we are judging what influences people or what's seeking to influence you through people. Does that make sense? How many know you can be used with a mixed spirit? Peter was an apostle. Peter was one of his major disciples and Peter operated in the power of the Holy Spirit and did amazing things when he was sent out in that anointing. But there were times when Peter also spoke out and Jesus had to say, get behind me, Satan. So he needed to know the discerning of the Spirit as well. And he operated in that. And we can be used when we have another agenda. Peter had another agenda for God. And when we hold on to an agenda that's not God's agenda, you open the door for the enemy to work through you. I'm not saying possess you or control you. I'm just saying, how many times you, have you been used by the enemy and realised, oops, I shouldn't have said that. What a mess I made there. It's easily done, so we have to guard ourselves. 
And we have to check our hearts and say, Lord, purify out any agenda that's not your agenda. So important. Um, we're not judging people. We're judging what influences people and what's seeking to influence us through people. So what's coming at you? If it's the Holy Spirit, I want to embrace it. If it's not, I'm going to let it go. It's not necessarily a demon. It just might be somebody getting so excited and emotional over you. Okay. There are five categories of spirits that we need to discern. Here are the five categories. Firstly, the Holy Spirit. We need to discern the Holy Spirit, yeah? yeah. Secondly, holy angels, or they're called ministering spirits in Hebrews 1, 13 to 14, ministering spirits. We need to discern angels at work around us. I believe we're in the days and the growing days where we're going to see more angel activity. Yes. Did you see that picture over um, St. Michael's, was it St. Michael's Church in, in the Ukraine in Kiev? Yes. Of the angel? Wow. We're going to see more activity like that. Not just in the Ukraine, but here. You're going to see more angelic activity. Scripture tells you that. We'll look at that as we go on. I get quite excited about that. I want the angel of the Lord to encamp around me, don't you? Well, you probably want him around you as well. <laughs> but I know you want him around me as well. Because you love me. I know you love me. You do love me, don't you? <laughs> don't you say a word, Barry. <laughs> Holy angels. Ministering spirits. The third, now sometimes three and four are, are lumped together, but I'm going to separate them out because I think there's, a, there's something I want to highlight in that. Ephesians 2, 2 says, Satan, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. He is a spirit. Okay, that's the third category. The fourth category is fallen angels. Now, Satan is also a fallen angel. He was an archangel. He was Lucifer. So you could link them together, but... For this, we'll separate them. Fallen angels, demons, uh, or unclean or evil spirits. Right? So, and, and uh, of the host of angels, a third of them decided to rebel with Satan. He wanted to be God. He wanted to be as God. He exalted himself to be worshipped. And so, he really was a tempted coup in heaven. And out of that rebellion, he was thrown out of heaven. And Revelation implies, Revelation 12 implies that a third of the angels also in heaven, the host of heaven that God created, decided to rebel with him and came down to earth. Hence, fallen angels. And the Bible refers to them as unclean or evil spirits or demons. Okay, and the final category there is the human spirit. So there's five categories we need to discern with this gift. Lord, give us the discerning of which spirit is going on here, what's operating here, and what do we embrace, what we make an agreement with, or what we resist. Okay? Um, all five of those categories are, in a battle, are engaged in a battle for planet Earth and the inhabitants of the Earth. All five of them are engaged in the battle. The Holy Spirit and the, the host of heaven, the angels, the holy angels, they're on our side, or they're on God's side. <laughs> they might not be on your side, actually. Uh, but they're on our, uh, well, they're on God's side. And then you've got Satan and his demons, they're against that, they're in a battle, and we're stuck in the middle. Isn't that exciting? And who you make an agreement with depends whether you on the victory side or the defeated side, okay? Um, so we need that discerning, and, and the discerning of spirits helps us to make right agreements in the battle to secure victory. How many love living in victory? Yeah. Yes, I want to live in the victory that Jesus has purchased for us at the cross. We've just drunk it in the cup. I want to live in that, and it depends on who you make an agreement with. When you make a wrong agreement, you open the door for the enemy to come in, and he can work on the earth. Why is the earth in a mess? Because people are making agreements with him, not with God. That's right. And that's why our world's in a mess. 
It's all the way through the Bible it teaches that. Who do you make an agreement with? Who are you worshipping? And you either worship or agree with one or the other. There's not a middle ground where, well, neither one touches you. It ain't that way. The Bible doesn't teach that. We like to believe it because it eases our consciences. But we need to recognise what scripture is teaching because it brings freedom. The truth that's embraced and you, you live in that truth, it sets you free. Amen. You'll know the truth. It's having an intimate relationship with the truth, not just a head knowledge of scriptures that you can quote. You need to embrace that truth in your life and live in that. And that's how you live in the freedom and the victory that Christ has purchased for you. <gasps> Take a breath, Paul. Amen. Thank you. Um. It's important to know what's seeking to influence us. And this gift gives us that ability. Discerning, I want to look today at discerning the Holy Spirit. All right? Let's take the next slide. Uh, who's behind there? Is that Jacob? Peter. 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 Okay. Peter. Thank you, Peter. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14. It says, The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he cannot know them because they are spiritually discerned. So the things of the Spirit, we need that gift to operate. And it's not the only way we discern it, but I mean, that gift helps us to sharpen our ability to say, that's God at work. And I can embrace that with confidence. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, it brings the confidence to step out. Praise God. It, it brings faith. It imparts faith into your heart. It sharpens our ability to grasp the things of God's Spirit. Romans 8, 16 there says, The Spirit bears witness or testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Spirit of God has a way of communicating with your human spirit. And, and, and how do we recognize that gift operating? It's like something speaks in here and you just know, you know in your knower that it's God. And I don't know how to explain it any other way really, that you've got a knower and you know in it. And you, that's God. It, 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 it witnesses to you, that's truth. I belong to God. I know I'm a Christian, not because I've worked it out, but because the Spirit of God said to me, you belong to me. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to, the Spirit of God keep saying that to us through our lives. This is the way, walk ye in it. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the, oh, that's the voice of the Lord. And we need to be more and more sensitized to the Spirit of God moving in our lives. Hearts that don't harden at any point. And God wants to heal hearts here this morning that have hardened towards God for various reasons. Not necessarily because you've been deliberately disobedient. But God wants to soften hearts that have hardened. I really feel that this morning. And we're going to pray for those at the end. Um, When the Spirit of God, when this gift is operating in our lives, there will be a peace that comes with it. The guidance of the Holy Spirit, and especially this gift, it'll just bring a peace that settles on you and go, Oh, that sits well with me. Sits well with me. Discerning the Spirit of God. It's, it, it's, we have a phrase, it just rings true. Heard that phrase? Do you know where it came from? I did a bit of research. I thought about it. sort out well, the roots of what I'm saying. And um, apparently, when they made gold and silver coins, they made them out of full gold and silver. And the counterfeiters would take a base cheaper metal and shape it like the, the, the proper one and then cover it with a very film, thin film of gold or silver. And so it was a counterfeit. And the way they tested whether it was the real or the counterfeit was they'd get the coin and they'd throw it on a rock. And it'd go, ping, if it was the real thing. If it was not the real thing, it'd go, thud. <laughs> yeah. So we need to discern between the thud and the ping. Now that's why I've got a set of ping golf clubs. Don't deliver me that of that one, Lord. <laughs> May all those who I play with not have ping golf clubs. 
Where's Andy? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Let's, let's, let's keep focused. That was a thud I heard there. But the ping and the thud are important in your guidance. And especially with this gift. It, something will grate in you. Oh, that doesn't sit well. Doesn't sit well. I had that the other day. I was in a meeting. Some guy comes up to me and said, I want to do this, this and this. Could you make room for me? And just suddenly inside, I thought, oh. And actually, I prayed, God, get me out of this one. I don't know what to do with it. And it was amazing how God sorted it out and he didn't do what he was going to do. But praise God. But you just get that. There are other people come up to you and say, I want to do this. And you think, oh, you get all excited inside. You think, oh, yes, that's the Holy Spirit. We need to listen to that ping and thud. I'm going to suggest to you, if you get the ping of the thud, and you keep ignoring it, and you don't listen to it, down the road a piece, you're going to have down the, down the road a piece. You're going to have the discernment of a brick. And there are people here today that are not far off the discernment of a brick. They're thinking, God, I don't know whether it's you or not. I am just a clue. And I've just got so cold inside and hardened inside, I can't tell the difference. Help me. And he's going to help you today. Okay. One of the saddest verses you'll read in the Bible is Judges 16, 20. We won't turn to it. You can take that off, by the way, Peter. Um, Judges 16, 20. I haven't got this on the slide, but it's, it just says this. Samson. You probably know about Samson. And this is the, the verse. He knew not that the Lord had departed from him. Isn't that a sad verse? Yes. He was a man who was led by the Spirit at times. I like that. He was a man, and there were other times when he wasn't. I want that God, and I don't, I don't, I'm not bothered whether it's you or not, I want it. Give me that woman. Well, he got the woman. Do you remember the guy who prayed, God, give me that woman or else I'll die? When he got the woman, he said, God, please. <laughs> I won't tell you what he said. Anyway, let God choose. Let God choose. Where was it? Samson was led by the Spirit at times, and in his presumption at times, it dulled him to sensing the anointing of the Spirit on his life to do things. Okay? And it exposed him eventually to the enemy. He went out, hair cut off. Delilah had duped him. And you know the story. And his, the length of his hair was a sign of his dedication to the Lord. His separation to the Lord. That broke. It lost his strength because of it. And he knew not the Lord had departed from him. He exposed to the enemy. He was defeated in the battle. He lost his vision. And he was bound and he became a joke. Isn't that sad? And church... The church has got to repent of being a joke for God, sadly, over the years. We probably need to intercede for that, actually. But we need to discern when the Spirit of God is on us to do something and when it isn't. And don't fight the battle that God doesn't want you to fight. Because you'll fight it on your own. You'll be exposed to the enemy. Potential to lose your vision. And come into bondage. And be a laughing stock. You don't want to be in that place. Okay. So we need to discern. Let's look at some of the applications of this. And then we'll pray. Worship. Worship. This gift is vital in worship. Um, the worship in a church. In a service. Sets the scene for God's presence. Would you agree? Yes. So vital. It's not just let's stick somebody up there that can play a note and hopefully sing. <laughs> and see where we go. No, 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 no. We need to discern the anointing on people's lives. This is vital for worship leaders. What you play, how you play, when you play, when you don't play. It can be the difference between having a service or an encounter with God. Amen. And I want an encounter with God when I come to church, not just another service. Amen? Amen. And that gifting is so important. I remember we did a conference once and this guy, his turn to lead, 
And he started off by saying, okay, let's just wait on the Lord for a moment. So we waited on the Lord for a moment. We were waiting to worship. And we, w- we waited for 45 minutes. We just sat there. Nobody said a word. I thought, God, golly, this guy needs a shaking up. And I'm about to speak, and I'm thinking, Lord, I need the scene set. The scene, the worship opens the hearts of people to hit, receive the word of God. It's so important. And then he said, this is what the Lord is saying. And he laid it all out, and I tell you, it was one of the most powerful meetings we ever had. And I thought he discerned the spirit of God. And I thought, wow, what, what, what courage to go across the norm. And that happened again on the Isle of Wight when I was there. This guy stood up and said, we're just going to wait on the Lord. And I'm thinking, oh, no, no, let's have some songs. <laughs> I've got to preach into this. I tell you, and again, I'll never forget that meeting. Powerful meeting. I remember going to a meeting on the Isle of Wight, and I've shared this before, so I won't go into all the details, but there was no anointing for me to preach. I didn't discern it at all. And God said, get up there and say you've got nothing. And they'd invited me down onto the Isle of Wight from way up north somewhere and uh, for the week to, to preach. And I said, I've got nothing. <laughs> and the pastor goes, huh? let's have another song. So I had another song and said, now Paul's going to come and preach. So I stood up again and said, I've still got nothing. <laughs> and when there's no anointing to preach, I ain't going to get in the pulpit and preach because it's all going to be a mess. But I tell you, I haven't got time to go into why, the whys and wherefores of that, but that... Basically, the guy had planted his church in the wrong place and he moved that day to another place and we had a meeting in the night and there was power in that meeting. And I had the anointing to preach. So it's discerning and being bold enough and courageous enough to act on what you've discerned. And there are people who ain't going to like it. But we want to please God rather than man, yeah? Um. Um, one of the applications of this gift is appointing roles and ministry positions in God's work. So important, church. We can stuff people into holes when they're square and their hole is round. And they don't fit. And I think God is shaking his church to get people out of round holes where they're square and vice versa. We need to get into the right place because you need the anoint. Your anointing gives what you call for, not what you want to be. It's so important to discern, is there an anointing of the Spirit on them to do that job? And the job of leaders is to discern that. The church is here to, to promote people's ministry and recognize their ministry and recognize their anointing and make room for that to happen so that the body can function properly and produce the result that the head wants. Yeah? And we need to discern an anointing on a person to do something. Talent is not enough. That's right. I was in a church. I was part of an eldership of a church once. And they wanted to appoint this guy as a treasurer. And I thought, oh, okay. He was... Because he was gifted an account, he was an accountant. Why wouldn't you make him a treasurer? Seems obvious, doesn't it? But there was a thud with it, not a ping. And I tell you, he made a mess of our um, finances. And not only that, he ran off with half the funds eventually. You got to listen to the thud. I. When called to the States to do some work for four odd years, they gave me the the job of treasurer. I had no talent in that area. I could spend it for them. (laughs) But I couldn't count it for them and put it in the right boxes and do the right things for it. And I said, God, they've got this wrong. But they said, we think you've got anointing for it. I thought, whoa. (laughs) I wish God had told me about it. But he did, he spent six months teaching me how to do the books. Not cook them, but do them. (laughs) And it worked. And their IRS, is it the IRS over there? 
they came and they checked the books. They were checking all Christian organizations because a lot of them were fiddling it, <laughs> sadly. And, and they checked our books and I'm thinking, oh God, I'm going to end up in prison. <laughs> Alcatraz, here we come. <laughs> they checked all the books. I punched out all the stuff from the computer. I'd set up this thing. And I tell you, I was pushing buttons just in the obedience to the Spirit of God. Is this the right button, Lord? Crazy stuff. That's how I used to design aircraft. Barry's glad I'm not in the aircraft industry anymore. <laughs> the guy said, that's amazing. The books are all in order. Thank you. Walked off. I thought, oh, thank you, God. I had an anointing for it. Not the talent. Although I had the talent, but didn't know it. And the Holy Spirit was bringing it out. So we, talent is not enough. Now, if you're going to sing and you've got no voice and can't play the instrument that well, you don't know how to tune your guitar, we might sort of have a little bit of a word with you on that one. <laughs> or switch your mic off. <laughs> you You've got an amazing gifting in many other areas, though, brother. <laughs> we recognize it. <laughs> I'm just looking at my notes to see where I am. Give you, an <laughs> Give you an example of this. Acts 6, Stephen was called to do what? Wait on tables. Yeah. Guess what the qualification for him to wait on tables was? He had to be filled and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Why on earth did he need that? Well, I don't know. But, well, I do know, but I haven't got time to go into it. But the thing is, he had to have that. There was anointing on him for it. There were other qualifications. He needed the gift of wisdom. He needed a wise man. He needed a good reputation. But he needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit just to wait on tables. You see, what we do is not just a job. It's a ministry. We need to see everything we do as a ministry. Amen. And when you see it as a ministry, you've got an anointing for it. You, 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 you connect with God in it. The anointing flows in that. And guess who gets glorified in that ministry? Him. We're here to glorify him, not you. And when you fit yourself into, oh, it's just a job. Hey, all we're seeing is you. We want to see Jesus. The world needs to see Jesus. Oh, I feel the sermon going on. Mm. Uh, we planted a church, a few of us planted a church together years ago in the Bedfordshire area. Uh, we had elders and then one stepped it down so we needed to replace an elder so we got together to decide who we should put in eldership or who God was saying and we sat there and I think we had a prayer I think we did and then all the eldership except myself said we're going to ask this guy to be an elder and you know as he said it just suddenly thud I thought oh lord no not him please no and I said, you know, I've got to say something, because we agreed on equal elders, you know, we made the decisions together. I said, look, I'm not happy with that. They said, why? Well, I just, just there's a thud. I didn't quite call it that then, but it, that's what I was trying to sell them. I said, you know, there's something wrong here. He, and he said, well, he's very talented, he's a very educated man, he, he'll do the job. Oh, he'll be great. So I said, look, if you want to do it, go ahead. I'm not going to fight it. I'll go along with it. But I just want you to know that's what I'll get. So they appointed him as an elder. Six months down the road, we realized that man had an agenda. That man was quenching the Holy Spirit left, right and center. And it was heartache. And I tell you, we came together once in an elders meeting when he didn't come actually. And we'd, we had to acknowledge before God, forgive us Lord, we've picked the wrong man. Because we did not wait for the discerning of the spirit of the Holy Spirit on the man. He wasn't anointed to do it. And we had to pray him out. And after we had to live with him for a year and it was a mess. It's not worth ignoring the thud of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? Finally, atmosphere. We need to discern the atmosphere for power encounters. I like this one. The atmosphere for power encounters or anything that may affect it. 
Luke 5, 17 says this, the power of the Lord was present to heal. Don't you love that verse? The power of the Lord was present to heal and Jesus discerned it and he moved with it. And boy, there was an anointing. The, 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 the circumstances was that was that he was in a house trying to hide away from people. He needed a rest and suddenly they found out he was there. They all came and, and then this, the four of them gar- carried this guy that was paralyzed and they couldn't get into the meeting. So they went upstairs, ripped the roof off. Hey, who wants a, a meeting in your home? When the anointing comes, watch out, you might lose your roof. (laughs) Oh, but I know it's for the kingdom, that's not a problem. (laughs) I'd better have him in church, really, wouldn't you? (laughs) Um, But anyway, they took the roof off, they lowered him. Sins are forgiven. Take up your bed and walk, and he does. And there's a lot more to it than that, but I've got got a lot of time. And basically, the people just so marveled, they said, we have never seen anything like this before I want to go to church I want to go to a meeting and walk away going wow we've never seen anything like this before and wouldn't that be nice more of that Lord and so we have to be discerning of the presence of the Lord to do whatever he wants to do and flow with it Okay, we just don't want to go with a structure. Structure's not necessarily wrong as long as we're not leaning on the structure. We're leaning on the Holy Spirit within the structure. Okay? Um, Jesus had to discern also blockages to the power encounters. He went to heal Jairus' daughter, remember? And on his way, he gets waylaid with the lady who touches the hem of his garment. And so he's a bit delayed. When he gets there, the daughter's died. Jairus' daughter has died. Too late, she's dead. He says, she's not dead, she's just asleep. And they laugh at him. So what does he do? Puts them out. There's, a, there's an atmosphere of unbelief. And that will block Jesus moving. And we need to discern that. Oh! That's here. That atmosphere, we're not making an agreement with that. And there are times when we have prayed with people where we've had to say to people, would you mind leaving? Very gently, very nicely, but would you mind leaving? Because we just want to pray with this person on their own. And God's moved. And when we haven't done that, there seems to be a blockage and it doesn't work. We need to discern that as well. Discerning of the moving of the Holy Spirit and what seeking to stop it. Just give you two examples and then I'll finish. Went to speak at a church in Somerset years ago. Not too long ago, actually. But anyway, the leader of the meeting was all over the place. He was a new guy. I'd never seen him in this church before. I've been to this church many times. But this, it was a new guy, and, and he's leading the service. And I think, what on earth is this guy on? He's all over the place. So eventually he said to me, uh, right, Paul, you to preach now. Okay, stood up. And I tell you, I stood up. I was in was like a straitjacket. I couldn't get my words out. I couldn't move. I, it, it, it was strange. It was like a spiritual force had just dropped on me. Mills in the congregation. She, she discerns an atmosphere that's wrong in the church. And there's obvious reasons why. But anyway, she does some warfare. And the moment she binds and commands that atmosphere to go, boy, it's like some shackles just dropped off me and I'm free. And I'm bouncing around and I'm in the flow. And I finished the meeting, and I just know, as I'm getting to the end of my message, it's like God says, there's power here to heal. And, I thought, and that was the gift of the discerning of spirits. It just came, and you just know God's going to move. And I thought, wow, okay. And I just said it, then I finished. I said, let's, let's just now wait on the Lord. And so this guy gets up. Okay, we'll have a video. <laughs> a video? So he says to the guy up in the, 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 on the desk, whatever, put the video in, Fred. Fred's trying to put the video in. And I'm stood there going, oh, bind this in the name of Jesus. What on earth is this? And I'm praying, God, don't let this happen. We're going to miss what you've got. And the guy's trying to put the video in. He says, it won't go in, it won't go in. I'm thinking, yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> he says, we can't have a video. So he turned around to me and said, okay, it's over, over to you. I made a challenge for salvation. Twelve people gave their lives to the Lord. 
Then I made a challenge for people who were sat on the edge of Christianity, sort of dipping the toe in, but you know, sort of saved, but, you know, I don't want to get too involved, you know. And I made that challenge, and I remember one of the guys, half a dozen guys stood up. And one of the guys came to me at the end, and he said, that is amazing. He said, I know I've been holding back on God, and I know I, I was a builder, and my, my body is in great pain and it's been in pain for a long time you prayed for me years ago and it got healed to a measure but it's come back again so i thought oh, okay all right so i said well um what you what you want to say to me he said the moment i stood up and surrendered wholeheartedly to you to the lord all the pain has gone from my body and i thought wow and then god started dropping in words of knowledge for healing and being set free of stuff one lady came partially blind we prayed for her she was released she was healed and she could see in her eye and and there was other stuff going on i haven't got time to tell you all about it. one lady just one lady we prayed for i mentioned this yesterday uh, we prayed for her i can't remember what we prayed for but just she'd have an encounter with god so she went home she walked in her bungalow and the corridor in her bungalow she walked in it's just like a wind blew on me and this fragrance i've never experienced this fragrance before it was so beautiful and she thought what on earth is that in my house and she said i just think it was the presence of god i thought well it could well be she said but then i went to the mirror i was taking my coat off and looking in the mirror and it was all gold all over my face especially around the bottom part of her face she said what do you think that was she came back in the night and told me this she said what do you think that was and i said i don't know i said well, gold speaks to the divine. I, I said, Lord, what is going on here? And, and the, Jesus said this to me. Tell her, I kissed her. Oh, wow. Isn't that amazing? Oh, wow. And I just thought, uh, she was in tears, I was in tears. I thought, wow, the presence of the Lord was there to heal. We need to discern these things, church, and not stick a video in Amen. at the wrong time. Finally, another conference we were at uh, with this Baptist church from the Midlands. I just knew on the Saturday night, just before we went to the meeting, that God was, Mel and I had been praying, God move in this. And we so, felt, got so excited uh, and discerned that God's presence was going to be there to move in power. And I thought, okay. So I, I sat with the leaders of this um, uh, church just before we went into the meeting and I said um, so what do you want to happen tonight he said uh, well there's a few in the congregation that would like a quiz <laughs> on the outside I'm going on the inside I'm going oh god <sighs> what do you think Paul <laughs> Well, let me tell you, I said, I think, we think there is going to be power to heal tonight. We have words of knowledge and God's going to move in power. So either that or your quiz, you choose. <laughs> and even Baptists will go for the power. <laughs> I love you, Baptists. Moving on. Well, I tell you, we had a meeting and a half. We were nearly praying with people till midnight. We started about half seven, eight. And that meeting, I tell you, people were being set free and healed. People were coming up and you, would, you didn't even have to touch them, but they were being touched by God. The power of God would meet them. And physical problems and ailments they had were being healed immediately. And it was dramatic. And I thought, wow, God, we have never seen it like this way before. And that's the word I want to leave with you. We need to desire to go from church saying we've never seen it this way before. We need the gift of the discerning of the Holy Spirit. When he's moving, let's move with him. Let's pray. Okay, um, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes if you would because I just want you to think about what I'm saying because if the Holy Spirit pings your heart now um, then I'd love you to respond and God would love you even more to respond. But you have felt 
Your heart has become hardened in areas, maybe. Maybe because you have of self-protection, of wounding in the past, but maybe it's because you've heard thuds and pings and ignored them when you should have acted upon them. And you realize now, sorry, Lord, I didn't mean that to happen. I was scared, whatever the reason. But you've come to a place where you think, I just don't know when you're moving. And I don't know how to discern between the enemy, you, me, and you desire to be, have that sensitivity restored. You desire for your heart to be softened by God. And if this morning you're saying, from here on in, God, if I hear a ping and a thud, I'm going to go with it. If that's your heart of repentance, then I want to pray for you now that your sensitivity will be restored and your any hardness will be softened so that you'll know this is the Spirit of God. And I'm going to embrace it. If that is you, will you stand where you are? Thank you. God bless you all. Praise God. If you're at home, I'm going to ask you to stand if you're sat. Just as a declaration to God what you're doing. I'm going to wait for a few moments because there's still one or two need to stand. Okay, just say in your own words to him, Lord, whatever, what, what, however you got there, just say, Lord, I'm sorry for whatever's caused this, but I want this to change. That's all you have to do. He knows your heart. You may know why it's got that way. Tell him, just say, I'm sorry, forgive me, cleanse me, and then I'm going to pray. Give you a moment to do that. And Lord, we pray now for your anointing to fall. Let there be power, the power of the Lord to heal here now. Will you touch each one of these hearts that stood and at home? And let that anointing now bring a softening. Lord, where there's been a hardening, cause a breaking in the name of Jesus. A breaking of the hard shell that's developed. Of habits that have developed in Jesus' name. And we pray now that you'll give each one that stood a soft heart, a soft heart to sense this is the Spirit of God. This is the ping. This is the thud. I'm going to embrace it. Lord, let, thou be that, let this be their experience from this moment onwards. We ask it in Jesus' name, and as a result, may they be safe in you and effective for you in Jesus name amen, amen. you may be seated and the lord bless you thank you paul <clears throat>